Welcome to Standard Imaging's discussion of metrology and dosimetry topics for the medical physicist. This tutorial is part of a three-part series on the basic principles surrounding measurements with linear accelerators using a variety of detectors such as ion chambers, diodes, and scintillators along with the associated electrometers. This segment will discuss the basics regarding ion chamber and electrometer function. To begin, a dosimeter can be described as any device capable of measuring quantities related to ionizing radiation, in particular, exposure, kerma, absorbed dose, or equivalent dose. A dosimeter, along with its reader, such as an electrometer, is referred to as a dosimetry system. A useful dosimeter with respect to medical physics applications exhibits the following properties. High accuracy and precision, and note that these two terms are not the same. Linearity of signal with dose over a wide range, a relatively flat energy response, small directional dependence, high spatial resolution, and a large dynamic range. I would also like to note here that viewers are encouraged to review the slide sets that are available from the IAEA, which discuss each of these properties in detail. This tutorial is focused on ion chamber and electrometer characteristics, and reference materials for these IAEA presentations can be found at the end of this video. Consider the image of a basic farmer type ionization chamber. There are three main parts to an ion chamber, a gas-filled cavity, an outer wall, and the central collecting electrode. The other absolutely essential component of a good ion chamber is a guard. The guard could actually be considered as the most important component in an ion chamber, as it not only guards your desired signal of interest, but it also defines the collecting volume. As you probably remember, a voltage is applied to our chambers, and most chambers today apply a bias to the central electrode leaving the outer wall at ground as to avoid shock hazards. So if we now consider a biased, air-filled ionization chamber, we can delve into what happens when it is placed in a beam of ionizing radiation. For indirectly ionizing radiation, such as a photon beam, the initial event that triggers the chamber signal is the release of high-energy electrons or positrons in the chamber wall through something like the photoelectric effect, Compton effect, or pair production. Some of the electrons released in the chamber wall enter the collecting volume and ionize the air through columbic interactions with air molecules, producing low energy electrons and positive ions. Since oxygen is an electronegative gas, the low energy electrons produced by high energy electrons interacting with the air molecules attach themselves to oxygen molecules and form negative ions. In standard air-filled ionization chambers, positive ions and negative ions are collected rather than positive ions and free electrons. And as I mentioned, the guard is essential in order to accurately define your collecting volume, which ultimately ensures that the signal collected is only due to ionization events within the collecting volume. Similar to the function of thimble chambers, Charge collection of ionizations in air-filled parallel plate chambers is shown here. Again, the guard is essential in defining the collecting volume of the chamber, and a well-guarded parallel plate chamber typically uses the rule of thumb that the guard thickness should be at least two times that of the size of the gap between the collector and the guard. Now that we have seen how charged particles are generated in an air-filled ionization chamber, and how that signal is captured by the collecting electrode of the chamber, it is then passed to an electrometer for readout, generally by a triaxial cable. Let us now consider this readout device. Electrometers are really general purpose instruments that have been tailored for medical physics purposes, like those found in the radiation oncology environment. Electrometers act to measure the current or charge produced by an ionization chamber or other detector. However, we are focusing on ion chambers. Considering that ionization chamber volumes extend from 0.005 cc's to over 800 cc's, electrometers must be able to handle currents ranging between 0.1 picoamps up to 1 microamp, depending on the source. The measurement of charge depends on the accumulation time, typically 15 to 60 seconds, and in general, an electrometer is a high-gain, negative feedback operational amplifier, 
with a standard resistor or standard capacitor in the feedback pathway, which measures the chamber current and charge respectively over a given time interval. One or both of these pre-amplifier circuits, either with a resistor or a capacitor, are contained in all electrometers. The feedback picoammeter is shown here, and the other circuit is a feedback picocoulometer. The feedback picoammeter measures an input current as related by the traditional V equals IR relationship, with different resistors covering different ranges. The maximum output limits are defined by your power supply voltage in this case. As mentioned, the other preamplifier circuit used in electrometers is the picocoulometer as shown here, where again the ionization current is incoming and passed through a capacitor related by the standard electricity relationship shown below, Q equals negative CV and V equals negative IT over C. Most capacitors use film polystyrene and range from 0.001 to 1 microfarads for our application in medical physics. One capacitor has 2 to 5 magnitudes of charge range for most standard electrometers. Once the electrometer front end detects a signal, there are numerous ways to display that information. Standard imaging electrometers make use of an integrator, as shown here, to measure charge by integrating the current over a selected time period. On that note, it is important to discuss what is meant when we talk about leakage within a system. Leakage currents represent non-dosimetric signals within an ionization chamber and associated electrometer. Their effects on the true radiation-induced dosimetry currents are minimized with a well-guarded chamber, low noise triaxial cables, and sophisticated electrometers, which are all available from standard imaging. Every component of the measurement can contribute to the leakage. This includes the electrometer, the chamber, and the triaxial cable used to connect the two. A well-designed system will have leakage currents at least two orders of magnitude lower than the measured dosimetric signal of interest. Leakage currents fall into three categories. Intrinsic leakage currents or dark currents resulting from surface and volume leakage currents flowing between the polarizing and measuring electrodes of the chamber. Radiation induced leakage currents which occur as a result of irradiation of other parts of the dosimetry system such as your cables and electronics. And finally, leakage can also be caused by mechanical stress induced and friction induced spurious cable currents resulting from bending and twisting of your cables. Standard imaging electrometers measure electrical current, not charge. A charge measurement is determined through a multiplication accounting for the amount of time in seconds that the electrical current is measured. All standard imaging electrometers' inherent leakage will never exceed plus or minus 0.25% of the expected signal, and this is half of the IEC 60731's requirement of plus or minus a half a percent. This roughly translates into plus or minus 25 femtoamps for an x radon A12 farmer type ion chamber being irradiated by a clinical LINAC. In the clinical setting, the entire system leakage, which we will talk about, needs to be determined and is usually desired to be less than a half a percent of the expected signal. When determining leakage, all components must be tested. With the dust cap secured to the triax connectors of the electrometer, the 100 second leakage in picoamps should be determined with 300 volts bias applied. Once it is determined to be within the range of acceptable leakage, the triaxial cable should then be connected to the electrometer and again another 100 seconds should be repeated. Once the cable leakage is determined, the chamber itself can be connected in the system and the leakage can again be assessed. A common issue that contributes to leakage is the cleanliness of the triaxial connectors. Even the smallest microns of dust can cause large amounts of leakage to be present. If it is determined that there is leakage due to any of these components in the system, using compressed air to clean out the triaxial connectors can be a solution. So now putting this all together, if we consider the chamber, cable, and electrometer as a system, the standard high voltage of 300 volts is applied between the guard and the thimble. 
To define a voltage, the magnitude and the polarity at one point with respect to another point must be indicated. In the diagram, the guard and the collecting electrode is at plus 300 volts with respect to the outer shell, casing, and earth, and the thimble. Thimble bias is the thimble potential with respect to the guard and is at negative 300 volts in this image. Considering this, the above configuration will produce a negative ionization current, although this does vary between manufacturers. With standard imaging electrometers, when a negative bias is applied, there is a negative charge on the collector, and therefore you are collecting positive electrons. At this point, you should all be familiar with the basics surrounding principal functions of ionization chambers and electrometers. Roll over the images here to learn more about some of the dosimetry products available from Standard Imaging, or visit the website. And please join us in our second tutorial on basic dosimetry measurements in the radiation oncology environment.